I have decluttered a lot of times over the past couple years as I've been on this minimalist journey. And while there are a ton of positives and I think it has changed my life for the better, it can also go south pretty quickly. Avoid these mistakes. Unrealistic expectation. We see things on YouTube or Pinterest or Instagram. And honestly, a lot of those are not normal, real things. I don't normally talk to my wall. And I did spend a solid three minutes cleaning up this room before I started shooting. So my house doesn't always look uh, exactly like that. <laughs> Especially at the beginning, I expected my house to go from like borderline hoarder to Pinterest level inside of like a week, maybe inside of a month, definitely two sessions and I will be all set. Uh, and that's just not the case. As it turns out, decluttering and the whole minimalist journey is a process. It is not something that just happens, boom, and it's done. If I had realized sooner that this was gonna be a process and I needed to be patient and to work at it and not expect uh, you know, you know, to get to level 10 right away, then it would have made things so much easier for me. Following other people. So let's say you're sitting there, you're watching Joshua Becker. He's talking about how you can declutter your home with the Becker method. Now you've tried about 17 other methods and they have not worked for you. And you're like, this guy seems to be making sense. He's got beautiful hair. He's got a soothing voice that puts me right to sleep. How can he be wrong? Well, honestly, he, he's probably not wrong. If you followed his method, uh, just like the other ones, they're probably going to work. But what one is going to work right for you? I tried so many different methods and doing it the way I saw other people do it. And while that is good and while you can learn things from other people, it's very different. So you need to find what is right for you, whether it's a method that you follow or whether it's your own thing. For me, it was having three different boxes. You got to sell, you got a donate and you got a trash and just going through. And that was the most simple way for me that worked, but everybody is different. So don't just stick with what somebody says. And if it doesn't work, you give up because this person said it would work and it didn't work. It's different for everybody. Find what one is going to be right for you. It was a gift. Now, honestly, I've done this with about half a dozen things uh, over the past year, just hanging on random stuff that people gave me for Christmas or my birthday or holidays or just given to me for, for whatever reason. And I've never used it or used it once and I'm hanging on to it just in case they come over so that maybe uh, I'll wear it or I'll, I'll use it with them so that I don't offend them. But honestly, if somebody gives you something and you don't actually use it and you give it to somebody who does need it by donating it and that person gets angry at you, that might not be the best friend. And obviously you don't want to be jerk, but I've also hung on to stuff for literally years, kept it in a closet because I felt bad about getting rid of it, even though I had never taken it out of the package. Don't do that. Analysis paralysis. Now this can definitely happen uh, very easily, not that it's ever happened to me, ever. This could be where you like start watching a bunch of YouTube videos, uh, going from one person to the next, getting the best tips, writing it down, getting checklists, finding the best method, reading five different books, but you never actually get started or you just do a little bit and then you never continue with the process. You never make it a habit. You get excited about it, but you don't take that and allow it to gain momentum in your life to start making progress trying to sprint. This happened a lot to me. Uh, you know, maybe you're watching a Matt Diavella video. And yes, I still mention his name, even though he called me this. You know what? Forget him. <laughs> We're watching uh, a Ron Banks. When you're getting excited, you're starting to declutter. Uh, you do a lot on a weekend. You tear your house apart. You start getting uh, bags full of stuff. But then Monday comes and you have to go to work and your house is still kind of a wreck because you got halfway through it. And then you do a little bit at night, but you're not as motivated. And then Tuesday comes and then Wednesday and Thursday, and you do less and less because you were sprinting. You were doing it all at once because you wanted to get from A to Z really quickly. But you have to realize that it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's going to take longer than you think it will. And you don't want to get burned out right away. What's more important is about building habit because otherwise it can be easy to give up after the first weekend. By the way, if you guys are new to my channel, I talk about minimalism and saving money all the time. So if that's something that interests you, uh, don't forget to subscribe because we're on the road to 100K by the end of the year. Other people. So as someone who lives with a non-minimalist, it can be tempting to blame other people uh, or to try to declutter for them or make them think the way that you think, make them live the lifestyle that you want to live. Uh, but that is not going to end well. Well, I think it's important to have open, honest discussions about where you want your life to be, how you want your house to look, how you spend your money and all of that stuff.
Um, there's only so much you can do. Leaving stuff in boxes. Now, actually, this is a very common thing. I've done it myself multiple times where you get started, you're decluttering stuff, you, you get a box full of stuff. This is my box that I always keep next to the door and I just keep throwing more stuff into. Sometimes you end up leaving that box or you declutter a room and then you have everything in bags, but you leave it in that room for a couple days and then a couple weeks. And then maybe a few weeks later, you start going through them and you're like, well, I actually probably should get rid of this thing. It's actually worth $5 and I'm sure I can get $5 for it. And then you start pulling other stuff out. Well, maybe I'll give this to a friend of mine. And next thing you know, you're kind of like muddy in the waters. You're back where you started. Once you declutter something, you make that decision to let it go. Get rid of it right away. Don't wait and make things harder on yourself. Have a process where every Friday, every Monday, every Sunday, whatever it is, you take and you declutter stuff until the stuff is gone from your house and out of your life. Organizing before decluttering. It's a trap. That's true, it is. It's tempting to take your stuff and try to organize it because you think you need all of it. And uh, I'm definitely not saying this because that's exactly what I did when I was getting started. I took my stuff and instead of getting rid of it, I put it all on shelves. And then about a month later, I ditched 80% of that stuff that I spent a full day stacking onto shelves because it was junk. And the organization industry is booming right now. So instead of dealing with all the crap that we have, we're getting shelving units, we're renting storage space, anything that we can do to put all this crap that we think we need uh, in, into a nice orderly spot instead of getting rid of it. Now I do think it's important to organize the stuff that you do actually need. And it's taken me a long time to do that because I'm an extremely messy person, but you wanna make sure that you declutter ruthlessly and get down to the stuff that you actually need so you don't have all that other junk clogging up the works. And then once you're down to what is actually essential, then you can go ahead and you can put some shelving units in. Then you can uh, consciously and intentionally think about how you want your items displayed and organized in your house. But don't do that until you get rid of all that stuff that you don't actually need being overly cautious with your clothes. Honestly, I took way too long to get rid of all my extra clothes. I kept stuff just in case for years. But actually recently I have made the switch to pretty much one brand of pants and one brand of shirt. And honestly, it is so much simpler. So pretty much every shirt that I own is cuts. They are a sponsor of mine, but I reached out to them because I love their stuff. It fits really well. I don't have to think about it. I reach my hand in and I pick out any shirt that I want and they all go with whatever I am wearing. And then for pants and shoes, I found specific brands that fit me and I don't have to think about and I just get those brands that fit really well. And while this isn't gonna be the same for everybody, if you are an athletic young guy, then uh, I would definitely recommend these. Again, they are a sponsor. If you guys wanna check them out, there is a discount code in the description for 15% off. And uh, I just overthought it and kept stuff for so long when there was really like three or four shirts that I wore every single day because I loved them and there were these. Not changing your buying habits. Now, honestly, this took me uh, like way longer than it should have. I decluttered my entire house a couple years ago and then I continued to buy stuff. Um, I was buying stuff at thrift stores. I would clear out my closet and then a couple months later, it would be relatively full again, just a couple things here and there every week. Uh, and it was because I was shopping as a recreation. I was buying stuff on Amazon without really thinking about it and being really intentional about that. So unless you address the initial root cause of the problem, which is bringing a bunch of crap into your home, then you're gonna have to keep decluttering and it can end up actually getting really expensive. Hey. I paid good money for this. I mean, not this because this is money, but uh, that can be an excuse that I uh, use to not declutter stuff right away. Uh, sometimes when I'm going through something, I'll find maybe uh, a pair of jeans that are brand new and I think I could sell and get $10 for, or maybe an old toaster that's in new condition and I think I can get 15 bucks for that. Uh, and instead of just getting rid of stuff right away, I start accumulating all this stuff that I think is too good to give away for free. Uh, and, and that I want to get money for. And sometimes those are, are good and you can get a decent amount of stuff from selling things around your house. I've made hundreds of dollars doing that, but you can take this too far. And if you're not actively posting stuff and getting rid of it, and it's not staying in your house any more than a week, uh, I've had stuff that stays for months in my house until eventually I decide, you know what, nobody wants to buy this. It's not worth my time uh, to, you know, to drive this somewhere or, or, or the time and frustration for $5. So while I am an extremely frugal person uh, and I totally believe in getting as much money and value out of stuff as you can, don't let that be an excuse that wrecks 
your whole thing because now you have a garage full of stuff that you're trying to sell and you don't actually sell it. Sometimes it's just worth the peace of mind to get rid of it, let it go and move on. Actually, this is the end of the video, so don't forget to subscribe and to do less and I'll see you next week.